Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. We appreciate you getting out and, and coming in. We, uh, we're seeing the change in the weather, the fall season coming in, and I love the fall season, and uh, I'm ready for it to be here. Uh, for the last several weeks and in, in last month, we've been talking to you about some of the Feast of Israel. We, we talked about the, the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, and, and last week I shared with you about the Feast of Tabernacles, and, and it's a, a week-long feast, a week-long celebration that they, they stay in, in tents or sukkots, as they call it, in, in a shelter, and it represents whenever God delivered Israel. Uh, when he delivered them from, uh, with Moses and they went in the wilderness, then they had to live that way for 40 years in those tents and those, in those shelters. And then on the, the eighth day, it's called the great day. The eighth is a great day. And Sadie and I have been looking into it. We've been looking at some of it. And, and I'm going to ask Sadie to share some of the things. She This morning, she was really excited about the things that God was showing her. And she was uh, trying to tell me all of it. And I told her, let me just let you share some of it with everybody, what you're seeing. And so she's going to come and share a few minutes on uh, what she sees in the Feast of Tabernacles and the, and the great day, which is the eighth day. I think it's on. Woo. Yeah, it's on. Really on. <laughs> so this is very interesting. Uh, and he's still unfolding this, and I am going to make a video about it, along with the 80 decrees he's given me. But I have been walking and praying. And when I pray, I pray in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord gives me Hebrew words a lot when I pray in the Spirit. And I kept, this word kept coming out of me, uh, Shemini, Shemini, Shemini. I had no idea what that was. I had no idea this eighth great day was also called Shemini Atzeret. <laughs> it's a mystery, basically, but Shemini is this eighth day. Okay? So um, traditionally what happens on this eighth great day after the seven days of tabernacles, um, it's like that extra day of the feast and... Uh, what they would do traditionally, and they still do it today, it's a day to pray for rain in the synagogue that God will favor us with another good year to be thankful. Now, this is interesting because in the word, Jesus goes up to the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, he wasn't going to go when his brothers were saying go. He said, it's not my time yet. But he snuck in quietly during the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles, and he shared a little bit. But he stood up on this eighth great day, y'all. This is so funny. In John 7, 37 through 39. Remember, they're praying for rain. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart, will throw rivers of living water. He was announcing, I am that rain. I am that living water in you, through you, going to flow through you. And we are standing at the threshold right now in 2022 of the double portion of that spirit being poured out on upon us. I feel that all over me as I'm talking about that right now. You want that? I want you to go home and get alone with the Lord. And I'm asking you to say, visit me, Lord. I want you to visit me tonight as we are crossing over into this eighth great day with your double portion. Father, I just, at the sound of my voice, I just bless these, every one of these people in this room with that, that you visit them with healing, spirit, soul, and body, you visit them with a dream, with a vision, with a scripture that they know, that they know that the God of heaven through Yeshua, the, his son, and your spirit spoke to them and changed them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, that's a good word. <laughs> that's amen. a good word. Thank you. Now, if you've got your Bibles, go to John chapter 7, where Sadie was just at, and 
is she was talking about uh, Jesus standing up there on that seventh day. And as he stood up and he said, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Then if you go over to, to John chapter 14, and you see that he tells you that, that he's going to send the Spirit. He says that he's going to send the, the promise uh, of the Spirit, and he will come and be in you and, and live through you. And so for us, as we look at it and we go through all the things that God is teaching us, all the things that God is saying to us in and through um, the feast and and for me as Sadie was really excited about what she was seeing and what God was showing her and, and as we go through the scripture and we recognize what Jesus is saying to each and every one of us he's telling us that he is going to come and tabernacle with us he's going to come and live within us and, and it's John 16 verse 33 he says the things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so he's overcome the world, and so we've got to recognize that. We've got to understand that. As I was praying this week and as I, I, I go about doing the things I've got to do in the mornings, I do my chores early, and as I was going through it, those of you who have heard me, you know that God will speak a word. In, 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 I will hear a word in my mind, and as I hear that word, I study it out. As I studied out this year, the word was reality. And as we look at reality, we all need a reality check and look and see where we're at. And then as you, we got into it, John 4, 23 was the chapter that I used and the verse that I used. Jesus said that there was a woman at the well that came to him. And she asked him, she was being religious and said, where should we worship? And he said, the day is coming and today is that day that those who worship me must worship in spirit and in truth. And he says, I'm searching for such. I'm searching for those people that will worship me in spirit and in truth. And so are we willing to dig into the Bible? Are we willing to get the scripture and see what God is saying? Last week as I was sharing, I felt like that God told me to turn to Colossians chapter 1. I felt like he said that, that there was something he wanted to say. And so as we were quiet before him, the scripture that he gave me was Colossians 1.18. And, and, and he says that he must have preeminence. And as we look at the word preeminence, that we've got to give him first. Well, does that bear witness with the word of God? Yeah, he said that we've got to give him preeminence. Well, what does preeminence mean? It says we must give him first. He said that we were to give him first fruits. Jesus was that first fruit offering that he gave to the Lord. He gave himself. And he was that first fruit. He was that seed that had to die so that you and I could have life. And so as we go through and we begin to look at all the things that's taking place, all the things that is transpiring round about us, is, am I willing to drink of that living water? Am I willing to give God preeminence in every area of my life? And is he give, if I give Him preeminence in every area of my life, then all of a sudden that living water begins to come out of me. That living water begins to represent Christ in each and every area of our life. And so am I willing to go there? Am I willing to, to look at these things? He said, He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He may have the preeminence. Am I giving Him that preeminence? That's a question that each and every one of us have to, to ask. When Cade got up and welcomed everybody this morning, he talked about Deuteronomy and how God showed him in Deuteronomy that Moses told the people, you know, you basically you need to examine yourself. That is the place that we are at this year of the reality check. Are we willing to examine ourselves? The 2 Corinthians 15.3 that we came up with and used out of the Amplified Bible that says, test and evaluate yourself. Are you of the faith? Examine yourself, not me. And he's telling all of us that. So we've got that reality check going on. 
I talked to you about reevaluating some of the relationships in your lives. I talked to you about rediscovering some areas of the Lord. And we've gone through all of this. And here we are in, a, in our year, in the Gregorian calendar, out of 365 days, we're on day 289. How many days does that leave us in this year? 76 days we have left in year 2022 in our Gregorian calendar. And so have, have we paid attention this year and had that reality check to look within? As we're coming down to the end and God speaks and says, are you giving me preeminence? Okay, y'all need to understand that the things that I hear, I go to Eugene first. I have to look inside and say, God, am I giving you preeminence in every area of my life? Okay, and so when I'm going about my business, about my chores and everything that I do, those are the things I'm looking at that I'm praying about. And I'm asking God about those things. Well, as I'm in the midst of praying and I'm in the midst of thinking about giving God preeminence in my life, I begin to think about two words that came to my mind. And the two words that came to my mind was toxic and detox. Have you all ever went through a detox in your body? Have you ever went through a detox from chemicals that have been placed in your body? Okay, the word detox in Webster's Dictionary is treatment to remove toxins and impurities from the body. Toxic and toxicity and all those things, it's poisonous, infection, it's extremely harsh, malicious, or harmful. It's assets that have lost all value and can't be sold. Okay, if we allow the toxicity to build up, then I believe it's going to cause our health to deteriorate. Several years ago, Sadie began to study, and she went to California and bought a, a machine that's to help people, and, in, and it helps people detox. It opens up the meridians of the body to help take out swelling, inflammation in the body. And I've watched as she's brought people in, and she's worked on those people for an hour. And when they get ready to leave, if they've gone through a detox really severely, Someone else has to drive them. Someone, I've had to help people out of the house to their cars because they detoxed so bad that they, it, it made them like they were drunk because it was taking all those toxins out of their bodies. One sure year she told me that I'd, I'd went through seven knee surgeries and she said, Eugene, we really need to detox your liver. And so Sadie mixed up some concoction. She studies, y'all, on all of these things. And I don't know where she comes up with some of them, but she told me I need to drink this stuff. Every hour I need to drink this. And she had all these different containers that I drank this one at this time and this one at this time. Well, I, I got rid of some stuff. And she said it was for my liver to be detoxed. Well, there was green coming out of me, and my liver was detoxing. And, and it was not a very fun experience. But she had studied and she said because of all the chemicals that they had put into my body, all the painkillers and all of the, the things, sedatives that knocked me out and all those through all those, the, all of those surgeries, she knew that I, my body was toxic, toxic. How many of you know family and friends, loved ones that have began, become septic and they ended up that their blood was septic and they ended up dying from those things? And so as I think about the the word that God says that, that his church needs to detox. And, and I start thinking along those lines and I think about what, what all is going on around about us. And, and what I first come to and what I first think about is one of the main things that we is toxic to you and I is the things that's going on between our ears. Uh, Joyce Myers wrote one of the best books that I ever read and it's called Battlefield of the Mind. And as I read that battlefield of the mind, she talked about that's where the war is at. And it's in your mind. Well, how many toxic thoughts go through your head on any given day? That's why we're told to take every thought captive as under the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is to do that? Well, I am to do that. Moses told the, the children of Israel, I don't get to go, but you're going to get to go. And so you need to examine yourself before you go. Joshua, before the people entered in, in Joshua chapter 3, Joshua told the people, 
He said, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow we're going to go away we've never been before. Why do I think God is saying so much about re-evaluating relationships? Why do I think He's talking to us about toxic thinking? Because I believe that the church of the living God is about to enter a day and a time that they've never been before. I believe that God's Spirit, as Sadie said, we're going to have a double portion. And as we have the double portion and we begin to see, I believe, the greatest revival that's ever taken place, there's going to be that regeneration of the church of the living God where they're going to begin to realize that they must give Him preeminence in all things. Not a few things, but in all things. And when we begin, as He says in John chapter 7, He says, to those who believe... As Scripture has said. Well, how does Scripture say? In John 1, 12, he says, To those who believed him, he gave the right to, begin, to become children of God. He's given us all that right when we receive Jesus. But I see people that continue to stay in the background. They continue to stay back, stay out. They won't go into the battle. And the reason that they won't is because there is an orphan spirit that they feel like that's for everyone else but them. Well, then when you read and you study throughout the book of John, he tells you, when I, I send you the Holy Spirit, and He comes, I send you the Helper, and He says, I will not leave you as orphans. That is a promise from God. And so if we're going to believe as the Scripture has said, I've got to believe that I'm not an orphan. I am a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I've got to believe that all of His promises are yes and amen. I've got to believe that He gave me the Helper, the Holy Spirit of God, to come and indwell me. You know what that word in the Hebrew means, dwell? It means tabernacle. It means tabernacle. Whenever you read and you study and you see these things, then you go, oh my gosh. Well, what about in Haggai chapter 2, verse 9? He tells us the latter days, the church in the latter day, the glory will be greater than the early days. Well, you read in 1 Kings chapter 8, if you read from 6 to 8, Solomon is dedicating the temple of God. He is dedicating the tabernacle. And he's dedicating the tabernacle, and as they're dedicating the Holy of Holies, as they carry the Ark of the Covenant in. It says the glory of the Lord came, and as the glory of the Lord came upon that place, it, with a, it was representative of a dark cloud, and as that cloud came in, the priest could not stand. You can read this in, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 11. And as he came in, they could not stand before the Lord. They didn't have to take a charity fall and play like God touched them. God touched them. When God touches you, you don't have to take a charity fall and hope somebody catches you on the way to the ground and hope He does something before you hit the ground. God's presence and His glory was so strong. Okay, now He tells us that the latter temple is going to be greater than the early temple. Okay, so who is the temple of God? Y'all, y'all been taught this ever since I started. We is the church. We don't attend church. We is the church. So we are the temple. We are the tabernacle of God. Okay, and as we're the temple of God, the tabernacle of God, then what he's saying is his glory is going to be poured out upon us. And when His glory is poured out upon us so strongly that rivers of living water are flowing out of us, and those rivers of living water are bringing life to everyone around them. There is no question. There is no question. The disciples, as they walked in, the Pharisees said, We perceive that you've been with that man Jesus. Well, how did they perceive it? Because their countenance, because the glory of the Lord was 
upon them. So you and I, if we look at this and we think about this, are my thoughts lined up with God's thoughts? I've been making a question over and over. Isaiah 55, he says, My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, says the Lord. Why? I ask myself that. Why? If I've been given the Holy Spirit of God, if I've been given that promise, if I've been given by His divine power all things that pertain to life and death, if I've been given anointing from the Holy One to know all things, if I have been given the mind of Christ, then why aren't my ways lining up with God's ways? Why aren't my thoughts lining up with God's thoughts? That is just a question I think that the church of living God must ask. We can't keep using that as an excuse. Well, you know, God, is, His ways are higher than our ways. No, let's go, discover Him. Let's seek Him. He said it's the glory of God to, to, to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to search a matter out. Okay, in Proverbs, in, in Proverbs, he says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I think that's 23, uh, 2, something like that. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what does that mean? Do I think of myself as an orphan? Or do I think of myself as chosen? See, he said, you can't even come unless I call you. He says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. So if he has chosen us, are we willing to give him preeminence in everything? Well, if I have an orphan spirit, if I walk around with an orphan mentality, then it's going to be be hard for me to give God preeminence. Why? Because everything is about me. And James tells us where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and everything, every evil work is present. Don't boast and lie against the truth. Why? Because that's humanity. Okay, as long as we live in this fleshly bodily, there's going to be a war between the spirit and the flesh. But I am to rule my soul. I am to take every thought captive. I am the one that is not to allow those toxic thoughts to come to my ears and sure not allow them to come out of my mouth. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life's in the power of my tongue. Well, I knew something bad was going to happen. Well, you know, you know, it's... We've got to be willing to be critical thinkers when we look at the Word of God and see, well, you know, that was back... No! Read Hebrews and he says, God the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever. So am I willing to look at those things that way? Am I willing to think about that? Philippians 4, 8 and 9, he says, whatever things. He says, finally now, my brethren, finally now, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, Whatever things are of good report, whatever things are virtuous, whatever things are praiseworthy, dwell upon these things. Do you know how many of those things I just read to you that the Bible says? Eight. Eight. And guess what eight means? New beginnings. Elijah performed eight miracles. Elisha came along behind him and followed him everywhere he went. And Elisha performed 16 miracles. How many is that? It's eight times two. It's double the portion. Do you understand? When we were out in the old building out there nine years ago, there was a young couple who had a miscarriage and lost a baby. And I was up there preaching and I was reading this. And immediately God said, I'm going to give them double. I'm going to give them twins. And I turned and I said, God's going to give you double. And Sadie went, no. They can't handle that right now. (laughs) Well, nine months later, they had twins. Because God said, I'm going to give you double. That is the place, y'all, that we've got to come to. We've got to be willing to come into the light. 
Why? Because he says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness and we have fellowship with one another. I'm going through all of this thinking, studying on toxic and on detoxing. And as I'm going through all of it, I went back to a memory that 30 plus years ago, I, I went to horseshoeing school, to farrier school to learn how to shoe horses. And, and the doctor, the man that taught us, he was a great older man and, and, and great guy. And I learned so much about horses from him. And we was, he was learning, teaching us how to, to build our own shoes, to use a forge, to do all these different things. And after we got where we were decent at shoeing horses, one day he told me, he came over and he says, Hey, Eugene, I got a project for you. I picked one person a year to do this and I want, or for class. And it's your, you're the one I picked to do this. And I said, Yes, sir, I'll do whatever you need me to do. He said, Go to my horse barn and I want you to trim all my stud horses. I said, Well, okay, that shouldn't be no problem. But I went to an old wooden barn. It used to at one time, this whole place out there was just a beautiful place but it, erosion had taken place not enough help to take care of it it was worn and it was weathered and I went into the barn and when I went in there I walked up to the first stall and he had all these these foundation quarter horses went all the way back to Joe Reed and Joe Reed was a, a, a stud horse that was part of the foundation breeding of the quarter horse business. And, and this doctor told me that he even knew my, my great-grandfather because my great-grandfather had a, a Joe Reed stud and that they were friends. And so I learned, learned things about my great-grandfather, my who, of course, was gone before I, I ever came along. But as I talked to him and I went down there and I walked up to the stall, the horse was standing in a stall that hadn't been cleaned in years. You know what happens when you have a horse in a stall and it's not been cleaned for years? There was manure piles as tall as this podium I'm standing behind. And the horse's feet were not very good. And, and I led the first one out. And as I led the first one out, I thought, wow, Lord, they're in here in the dark. <laughs> and they're in all of this. This is a terrible situation. And I didn't know why that I was sent down there to do that. But just this week, God reminded me of that and told me that that is the way a big part of the church of living God is. They are not willing to get rid of the toxins and it's built up and it's built up. And I want them to get rid of that bull. This was horse, but I want to get rid of it. Y'all understand? Okay, and... And as I took that horse outside, and I started on his front foot, and as I picked his front foot up and put it between my legs, I bent over and I started to clip his feet. All of a sudden, this horse started trying to pull his foot away from me. Well, 30 years ago, I thought I was maybe not bad, but the bad didn't mess with me. And when this horse started pulling, I thought, well, I'll train you. I'm just going to hold on. Well, and about that fast... My head bounced off the ground because he reared up and bounced me four eyes forward. And so once again, I learned something. Here it is 30 years later as him reminding me this. If I try to do this in my own strengths, I'm going to get a wake-up call. I might bounce my head off the ground. So many times in my life, I've tried to do things in my own strengths. And God has spoken to me and said, we're at a crossroads in life that I've got to be willing to do things His way. I've got to be willing to find out what His will is in this situation. I've got to find out what His way is. What direction do you want me to go? Moses told God, if you don't go, I ain't going. And God said, Moses, I ain't going. Well, some of the other people presumed, and they ran in themselves and 20,000 died because they were presumptuously. Jesus himself said, I only go where the Father tells me to go. I only say what the Father tells me to say. That is preeminence. Do you understand? That is giving God preeminence in everything. I'm not even going to go if you ain't going, God. 
I'm not going to say anything unless you give me what to say. Am I willing to give him preeminence in every area of my life? Am I willing to come out from the dark? Am I willing to allow the Holy Spirit of God to reveal within me? Okay, I told you all that the word for the new year is exposure. And when you think about exposure, it's immediately negative. But what I see in it, that God is going to bring revelation upon His sons and daughters. If you read in Colossians chapter 1, when you get down to 18, and I showed you that He said, give Him preeminence. If you go up back to 9 and you start reading, the Apostle Paul prayed for the church in Colossia. And he gave that church a prayer that he says, I pray that you will know God's will in your life. I pray that you will grow in the knowledge of God. I pray that you will be filled with all power from the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that in all things you will give God thanks. I pray that you will joyously give Him thanks in all things. He prays for the church, for each and every one of us. And then He says that you've got to give Him preeminence. When you give Him preeminence, then you're going to know what God's will is in your life. Then you're going to know how to walk worthy of the Lord in everything you say and do. Then you're going to be able to be guided into all truth. And so this word about uh, toxicity and detoxing and all those things, why would my wife do that to me? Well, so I can teach it here 10 years later. So, So I can talk about it. And I can tell you, there was things that came out of my liver. And it was unreal because you could see the nodules that were coming out of my liver. It was something that my body needed because toxicity was in me. Okay, so am I willing to pray to God and say, God, I want that double portion. I want to see the glory. Your manifested presence, your manifested power, your manifested goodness. I want to see that in the land of the living, the song that we just sang. I want to see it. I don't want to get to heaven and then have to see all of it. I want to see it to now. I want to experience it now. Is that wrong? Well, no, because he said, to those who believe, as the scripture has said, out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. So how many of y'all want to go with me? How many of y'all want to receive that with me? God gives us the desires of our heart. Okay? We've got to be willing to enter in. We've got to be willing not to hide out. I know where the door or the lock is hid. The key to their house is hid. And I know where they hide the good stuff in the icebox, in the cabinet. And so I can go in there and feast anytime I want to. The stuff Sadie won't let me have, I can slip in over there. <sighs> okay? Do, do, we want, do we want to enter into that fullness? Do we want to walk in that detoxification? If we want to, then we've got to be willing to give him preeminence. We've got to give him first. Why does he say give the first fruits? Why did Israel, as they celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles, they bought the first fruit offering? Why? Because that was the harvest season. They were just finishing off and they brought first fruit. God always wanted the first. He said, bring me the first. Who was it? Elijah or Elisha that went to the lady of Zarephath? And she was going to make her and her son a cake and then die. And he said, make me one first, Elijah. She made him one first, and her oil and flour never run out. In the drought, in all that was going on, in the famine, she never ran out. Why? Because she gave God first. So am I willing to give God first of my time? My talents, all of my treasure. Am I willing to give God my temple? 
that I am that Sukkot. I am that tent. I am that tabernacle of the Most High God. Father, we thank you that all of us must come to that place that we are willing to give you preeminence, that we've got to give you first. And Father, as I study throughout Scripture, every time that they did that, Father, they gave you first, then you directed them. When Joshua obeyed you and went to Jericho, the walls fell down. But then he didn't seek you and went to Ai, and he got his tail whooped. And he said, you didn't even seek me. He was doing it in his own strengths. He wasn't giving God preeminence even in possessing the land that God gave them. And so, Father, so many times we are guilty of this, that we have not given you preeminence. I myself have told you to take a break. I had this one. I didn't literally say that out of my mouth, but that was what was going on inside of me, Father. And so I repent of not giving you preeminence in everything. Father, we desire. Moses said, Father, please show me your glory. And you said, Moses, I'm going to show you my goodness. Father, we want to see all of your glory. Not just the goodness, but we want to see your presence and power along with that goodness. Holy Spirit, come and fill us all and guide us that we may believe as the Scripture has said. Help us believe as the Scripture has said. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Y'all agree with that prayer? Amen. Sir. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Please, study about what does it mean for you to detox what does it mean for you to, to get those toxic thoughts out of your mind? I could do a whole series on this. Because then we could start talking about other things. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe we should. Love y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here. Be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thanks for watching this week's message. If you would like to partner with us financially or support our ministry, text the code KINGDOMLIFE to 94000 or visit our website, cmjacksboro.com.